Reverend Mei Ling, Reverend Susan Mei Ling, Susan Mei Ling, Lady Mei Ling, Lady Dory Bell, Lady Mei Ling America. I've been known, I've, I've got a few names, I've got a few names. I, I'm still me, I'm just me. So I was just listening to um, Jonathan Capehart uh, interviewing Wanda Sykes. And I've got to say, first off, I've always thought she was funny. <laughs> like when I first heard her, I, I can't remember where I was listening to her. I think she was, um, I think she was on Comedy Central one time. I was just listening. I was like, oh, I know that's funny. <laughs> and <laughs> I know I'm not the only one, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I think it was Comedy Central. I think it was. Um, nonetheless, I didn't know she was in the NSA. That's kind of funny. Not in a ha-ha sort of way, just one of those, I, I didn't know she was in the NSA. That's pretty cool. I mean, you know, <laughs> not every day you get to know something like that, right? I guess. So one of the questions Jonathan had asked her was in reference to um, one of her first jokes and stuff like that. And... I had tried stand-up comedy, and I didn't think I did that well. Like, I didn't think that it was all that um, special, I guess. I, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know how to... <laughs> I'm not, the, I'm not the, the smartest crayon in the toolbox, so um, I didn't know how that sort of stuff went. And um, I had never been to a comedy club before. It was just, it was one of those, um, I was in Scottsdale, Arizona. And um, <clears throat> the guy who, you know, I, I went up to him and I'm just like, hey, you know, I want to try this out. And he's like, oh, can I take a picture of you? I'm like, sure, why? <laughs> why do you want to do that? And he said, um, well, your hair is red. I'm like, yep. Yeah. So I explained my haircut and my hair color. He's like, oh my God, okay. Um, well, you know, your hair is red. My, I think he said it was his niece and him did this like color tag, something, another, like they find something, take a picture of it. He goes, yeah, you know, your, your hair is red. So I can say I found red. And I was like, well, technically because of all my tattoos, you can say you found the rainbow. And he was just, oh, oh okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I was like, technically, I mean, I got every, every color in the rainbow just there. <laughs> Not forgetting, you know. <laughs> and so um, he, he took a picture and so went and waited, you know, because of those, you know, the way that stuff goes for open mic. And I was in a really, really, really bad place. Um, for a multitude of reasons in that regard that I obviously did not understand at all. I get it now. Um, a little late, nonetheless. So, I had done this joke, um, and it was when I had gone up on stage, I had <laughs> irony of my tattoos on my hand, um, and in my hand, on, <laughs> on the top of my hands, but in my skin. Same thing here, and so I was like, okay, um, I'm gonna write down the three top, you know, whatever. And uh, because I was so nervous, not knowing how I was gonna deal with it because of all my issues I knew with electricity and stuff, um, I just didn't know that's what it was called. I knew that I had been zapped by the microphone when at an event many, many years ago. So it was one of those, okay, I'm not going to touch the microphone. It's very nerve-wracking. And so I had given the audience um, three choices. So I read off the three that I had written on my hand that looked just like the rest of my tattoos. It just blended in, ironically. And so they had, um, they had picked the um, Fifty Shades Bullshit. That was, the, that was the one that they went off of. And I was like, okay, no problem. And I just started rattling things off, as I do. And it was just one of those, it's not an offense towards, you know, the, the author who had written the, the book series, 
for me, being in the lifestyle, you know, having been in BDSM, LGBTQP, and swinger lifestyle, that sort of stuff, you know, in, in an overall sort of way, sent in a bunch of these little boys, you know, that were of various ages. I mean, just brand new to the lifestyle. They thought that they were masters as far as, like, you know, I would get contacted by these little 18-year-old boys going, I'm a master. Yeah, you, know, you haven't even finished ma learning how to masturbate yet, boy. Do not come at me and try to, you know, and, and a couple people giggled and stuff like that. And it was just one of those, realistically, do not come at me. I've been in the lifestyle a while. Don't take the, the physical, you know, aspect and think that just because of one thing or another that I don't know. And I'm not saying that I can't learn still that's not it at all after the head injury on palm sunday in 2000 please i'm constantly <laughs> relearning <laughs> what i forgot <laughs> and so you know then it was something about in reference to you know not necessarily the aspects of you know the, that well partially it was in reference to there aren't just male dominance there are female dominance and not in a way of making fun of pro dominance at all like of whichever gender just one of those there are plenty of female dominance out there that aren't necessarily into the professional aspect and not making fun of that at all like not in the comedic way not making fun of it at all in any way just one of those but there are females who are like me who are just you know one of those you know so um i remember that there was a, a, a bar stool, so I, I, I put one up on the top of the fridge that I moved out of the way. And so I was like, okay, so, you know, for example, ladies, you know, who really would not want someone taking care of your feet? I mean, are you really going to complain? And, you know, while they're down there, they could take care of a few things while they're taking care of your feet, making sure that you are taken care of from bottom to top, either way, and sort of stuff. And then I kind of kept going a little bit, but I only had three minutes. And so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, never mind. Thanks. <laughs> That's the end of that. And so, um, which we call it, I had tried um, explaining certain aspects in regards to the fact that I am half Chinese. And I started discussing, it was another time, and I was like, you know, I, I am half Chinese. And my biological sister actually has slanted eyes, whereas I look like I do. And the only way I can have slanted eyes is through painting with makeup. That's it. I did like, I, and, and, I, and part of it I went into, I was like, you know, I was looking through picture albums from when I was like a child. And I could see where like my eyes were slanted, had the almond shape, the way like my son's eyes were when, you know, I gave birth to him and stuff like that. Even now his eyes are far more slanted than mine are. That's just it. It's the way it is. His, they, they look like almonds, whereas, like, my eyes are round. <laughs> very, very round. And, you know, one of those, this, this is just how I came out, you know, but <laughs> not fully, obviously. This would suck to give birth to, right? <laughs> Five foot, four hundred something pound feet. Yeah, <laughs> no female wants to give birth to that. <laughs> Not at all. And so that's called an elephant. And so, <laughs> and even that still has pain, nonetheless. So, in that regard, it was one of those. I kind of got some looks and it was like, well, I am half Chinese. I know I don't look it. My middle name is Mi Ling. And, 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 and while it is not the stereotypical middle name or more known Asian type of name, that is actually my middle name. I've had it since, you know, I was born and stuff. Actually, technically before. Because my great-grandfather and my great-grandmother mandated it to my biological mother. She was very much informed. You best give her that middle name. We don't care. Like, you don't, you don't have a choice. And this is exactly how it is to be spelled. And this will be on her birth certificate. And this will be her middle name, period, and end of story. And Anna, my biological mother, knew she best not. Especially at that time. 
you know, in comparison to when my biological sister was born, who actually, you know, especially in comparison to pictures, because if you look at the pictures that are considered my baby pictures and you put them next to my biological sister's baby pictures, you'd think that they were taken at the exact same time. You wouldn't think that, you know, my pictures are my baby pictures at all. Like whatsoever. You would not see it at all. Any pictures where I was with my great grandfather, I have sunglasses on my face because of the fact that I did not look Asian ever. Ever. With my biological sister, oh yeah, she looks, yes. Even to this day, she probably still has the slanted, you know, almond shaped eyes. She has the tan olive complexion, whereas, you know, I have tattoos. And that's about, it. and that's not really Asian. That's just, I have tattoos. That's it. Um, <laughs> and so when Anna had explained to my great grandfather, great grandmother, or Bukung and Bukpu, that Patricia's middle name was not Asian at all, my great grandparents were infuriated. And Anna's response was, well, she was born on your birthday to my great-grandfather, not realizing that she had insulted my great-grandmother. Because my great-grandmother was the one who did the, the research for the names and did the astrological stuff with that. So she, yes, very much insulted my great-grandfather, but majorly insulted my great-grandmother. And you know that saying... Happy wife, happy life. Well, <laughs> how do you think that went every time my great-grandfather had a birthday? And was reminded, as far as my great-grandmother, of his birthday as well as Patricia's birthday being on the same day. That did not go well. That is, a, that is the answer to that. It was a rhetorical question. My great-grandmother, my buck boo, she was infuriated infuriated. She actually refused to allow us to go to New York when it was Buckung's birthday, just out of spite to Anna, completely out of spite to her. She was so infuriated. And, you know, <laughs> those who are married, it does not matter who you are married to, you know that if your spouse is like, oh, uh, uh, I don't care. I don't care if it's your birthday. I don't care. I don't care. No, you know, you had an insult, especially they had immigrated from China to escape Mao Zedong. And, Anna, hoo, hoo, hoo. and Anna is the white one that has like all sorts of like different stuff that is not Asian, anything but Asian. And that was her choice. And anybody who's ever met somebody from the original homeland sort of thing, you know you do not insult the old world country. You just don't do that. You just, that's dumb. Not only do you not do that as far as insulting the, the one from the old world country, but at the exact same time, you do not do it disrespectfully. And, oh, well, it's the same birthday. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. I watched my great-grandmother put extra spicy food seasonings on Anna's food. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. And completely pretending not to speak any bit of English at all. She refused to speak English to Anna. When Anna was in the uh, apartment or condo, she wouldn't, she, she, the entire time she pretended she didn't know any bit of American at all, whatsoever. The end, up until her death, she had, Anna had no idea that my great-grandmother actually spoke English quite well. We would talk when Patricia and Mike and Anna were out of the apartment or condominium. We would have perfectly fine discussions. However, the second Anna was in the apartment or condominium, depending on how you, because like they, in New York, they're, they look like condominium or they are condominiums if you own them, but they look like apartments. That's the way it is. And so <laughs> anytime Anna and Patricia were in 
the apartment. She refused to speak English. She didn't speak English to not only Anna, but she didn't speak English to Patricia either. Fully out of spite. Fully out of spite. She tried to, but then when she saw that Patricia was acting the way Anna was and it probably still is, refused to. Just as you're like your mother. And that was the end of it. That was the end of it. She spoke English with me. She also taught me Chinese because she was infuriated at the fact that Anna refused to put me into a Chinese school. Because I could have gone to, like, in uh, Asher Holmes Elementary School, on Saturdays, they taught Chinese. And Anna's choice was to refuse to let me learn that. And so anytime going up to New York, because what would always wind up happening is I would be dropped off and Anna and Mike and Patricia would go do whatever because of whatever Patricia needed and whatever Patricia wanted and all that stuff. Like I never got to go ice skating at Wallman Rink. I got to be told about it. I got to be told what it looked like and all sorts of stuff. Like, oh, and they would even walk me past it like, oh, we took Patricia here, but you're not going to get to go there. <laughs> like, what? Why do you hate me so much that, like, that, I mean, like, literally, look, do you see how pretty the, the ice rink is? You can't go there, but we took your sister there earlier yesterday. This is where we took her. Yeah, she went ice skating here. Doesn't that look like fun? <laughs> well, if you actually looked as, you know, pretty as your sister does, then, you know, we would take you, but, you know, <laughs> don't want you in there. Oh, okay, well, excuse me. Fine, whatever. Unfortunately, I know that I'm not the only individual who has dealt with something like that. And so part of the fact that, you know, the way I was raised was why I had fought so diligently to make sure no matter what, when it came to my son and my daughter, they never had, like, maybe at the time they would doubt a little bit because of the, the child aspect, but later when they were older, they would never be able to truthfully be like, no, she didn't kick. No, no, no. Both of them would be able to be like, no, no, no. She did everything she possibly could in every way to make sure no matter what, you know, like, was as equally treated and, and balanced as possible to each one's, you know, individual personality. And so, you know, it, it was everything that I could do. Like, for example, my son wanted to be in, in fencing. Okay, get you into fencing, no problem. And, um, and, and he did, he did the fencing stuff. And then um, Lydia, my daughter, uh, James is my son. Lydia, she, James Michael, Lydia Louise. Um, Lydia wanted to get into dance. Okay, no problem. Both of them wanted to be in gymnastics. I definitely don't have a problem with that. Both of you will be able to benefit from that. Both of you. Um, originally in San Antonio, I had tried to, you know, do certain things and so got them into Tai Chi. And, and then Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., decided he wanted to be involved with that. And it's like, yeah, but you don't, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. You're going to tattletale on me, to, who is now my dad, ex husband, then just ex husband. I, that's whatever. <laughs> whatever. I just away. So, you know, but in that regard, you know, it was one of those, Patricia got all sorts of stuff, and then, oh, when it came to that side of the family, especially in New York, because Patricia actually looked and looks Asian, whereas I do not. Um, the only time I believed I had Asian in me was when I got this tattoo done. And the reason why is because it took three times to get this that white. That was the only time I believed I had yellow in my skin or olive or whatever. That was the only time. That was the only time where I was like, 
okay, well, maybe, maybe I actually, maybe I'm actually, you know, part Chinese. Okay. I, I can accept that now. Only because it took three times to get this done. And mind you, my tattoos are to help my memory. <laughs> From my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. I have memory issues. Each one of my tattoos has a spiritual aspect and I meditated during each one and prayed and so on and so forth. But I also have cognitive issues. <laughs> um, I don't think there is any way <laughs> for me to ever see that without somebody taking a picture of that tattoo. Uh, like, th like the one on my shoulder, I can kind of turn. The one on my shoulder, I can kind of turn it up. The one in the center of my back, I cannot. It took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> I can laugh at myself. Okay. And so, you know, and so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that. I did. I did. I did. I did. But in regards to, like, going to New York, my biological sister actually looked Asian growing up and, you know, even when, you know, being an adult and all that stuff. And so my, like, biological father's side of the family, they welcomed her with open arms because she actually, you know, looks <laughs> that way. Whereas, I look like me. And so, like, school pictures from Asher Holmes Elementary School, that'll give you a big example as to, oh, you don't look Asian at all. Like, where... And I made a joke, <laughs> which... Anna, my biological mother, did not like. So she had she had put together a photo album because she got into scrapbooking. And she's like, look, I did this. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I'm looking through the pictures and she's like, do you remember this? No. <laughs> when did this happen? Oh, uh, it was before your head injury. Okay. <laughs> but you don't remember it? No. <laughs> Excuse me, um, <laughs> did you hear the words that just came out of your mouth? Why don't you remember it before your head injury? If you didn't have a head injury, maybe you'd remember it. Now look at the next picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> look at, the, do you remember that? When did it happen? Because I'm going to tell you, no, I don't remember any of these pictures. Well, it happened before your head injury. Probably why I don't remember it. Well, you should. Oh, but I can't. <laughs> why not? You're gonna give me that excuse that you just had a head injury? I don't really think it's an excuse, but okay. <laughs> Go through the pictures, and then there's this point where you know, I'm like, why? Why is my skin? So much tanner, oliver, -er, or whatever color. <laughs> so young when I would not have been outside. And, you know, New Jersey and New York, you're usually covered because it's colder weather. Why, why is my skin, like, not so whatever? And Anna was just like, oh, that's just how it is. Oh, okay, well, maybe that's why I don't remember your pictures. <laughs> just, maybe. I don't know. And then, you know, she showed me Patricia's album, and I'm like, wow, well, like, that looks like the exact same clothing. Oh, well, you know, she wore hand-me-downs. That's what I was told, and I'm like, um... <laughs> What, what did you just tell me? Yeah, no, 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 Patricia wore hand-me-downs. From who? From you. Recap, <laughs> real quick. Look, we took your sister to Wallaman Rink, where you cannot go 
because, you know, you're an embarrassment and blah, 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 blah. But Patricia wore hand-me-downs. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't believe that. I didn't believe it then. I don't believe it now. However, you know, going through. And then all of a sudden, like, there's a picture that I kind of recognize. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, so then, because I have no filter <laughs> on my mouth. Because, like, if I think something and, and, and uh, I know I'm not the only person. So, you know, the, the page got flipped. I look at it. I go, what happened? And Anna looks at me and goes, what do you mean? Well, my eyes are round. <laughs> Picture before. Look, I have slanted eyes. Look, my eyes are round. What happened that year? Did I get scared? Did something scare me that year? Like, why are my eyes so huge? Like, what happened? Like, look, look, slanted almond shaped eyes. <laughs> round. <laughs> round, 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 round. Eyes. Like, hello. <sighs> you have such a warped sense of humor. N no. No, 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 no. So, for you, that would be like, okay, kind of like, this is the, is the, is the, is the, is the picture, and then like, that. Like, what happened? Like, how'd it go from, like, the, like, it was just like, the, and the, you know, because this is much bigger, right? And so, like, hello. No, 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 you're just, you're just making stuff up. No, the picture, the two pictures. <laughs> two, two pictures. Like, what happened? Susan, you're such a pain in the ass. Yes, I know. Nonetheless, like, you know, almond-ish <laughs> shaved eyes. Bigger, hello. And nope, nope. You're just seeing things. I don't know about that. Um, you are right. You are accurate. I am seeing things. I am seeing the difference <laughs> between my eyes, supposedly, in this picture, and then in that picture. I'm uh, very much able to see that. What happened? What happened that year? Like what happened? You're just, you just don't know. Well, why don't you tell me? <laughs> stop being over dramatic, and then she started crying after she told me to stop being over dramatic, and 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 then I just I'm I'm gonna go out to the garage and smoke. <laughs> like I'm gonna go with my fuck this shit. I hate you. <laughs> just just throw that out there. And so you know, I had I had started that aspect of the that joke, and and that part. Um, oh, I could tell that, that that was not taken so well. And it was just one of those, well, um, this is my background. And then, you know, I did discuss partially in regards to Mike. Because I know that Mike is not the only Asian that is like that. So he was born in America. He's the first generation born in the United States of America. Full-blooded Chinese. Full-blooded. However, <laughs> not born in China, born in America, and then he was raised in orphanages and foster care. And so while he does look Asian, you know, one of the things I started to try to explain was, you know, he's not the typical at all, like, like not at all. So one day... I was at my apartment in San Antonio. This was like 2012. And he shows up with Anna. Anna takes my laptop to go do whatever. It's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And so I'm talking with Mike. Mike says, I got called something. I can't fucking believe it. And I'm like, okay. See, not the typical Asian at all. No, not very calm. Not very, no, 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 no. Like, shh. Okay, what's up? Very, very New York. <laughs> very, very New York, New Jersey. They just, yeah. And so, specific boroughs of New York, nonetheless. Very much East Coasty, and you won't believe this shit. Okay, what? <laughs> Why don't you tell me? So, you know, I lean back in my chair, which my chair was in the corner. I, I, my, that was my chair. You did not sit in my chair. You just, if people came over, apparently my neighbors feel like tapping on the wall at 7.36. I don't care. And so I'm sitting in my chair and, you know, 
Mike, you know, he sat wherever and, you know, there were plenty of chairs. There's a total of four. So I'm sitting in my chair. I'm in the corner. I always sat there. Like in that particular apartment complex, that was, that was, I, I just, even in any place, I normally had my back against the wall. So that way I could have a view of everything that was going on in case I needed to get up quickly to go take care of something, but I could be able to see. So in my house in San Antonio, my back was against what was the windows, but the brick wall facing out towards the, the patio and then the backyard so I could see my children, make sure I could pay attention to the stuff that was going by. In my house in Carrollton, my chair was the one with the back against the wall, which was on the other side of the equivalent of where the fireplace was. And, you know, looking out into the backyard and, you know, the back driveway area and be able to see my children if they were outside playing, you know, or just be close enough to the door that I could go inside without a problem. And the uh, same thing with, well, the one in Cedar Park, it was against the wall, but because that patio was so weird, it was really, really, really weird of a patio, extremely weird. It's like at a like, three foot drop down to the ground. I was like, okay. My son, I had gotten him uh, and his sister as well, but my son, um, it, one of those um, body punching things so that way he could, you know, get aggression out and stuff like that. Um, and I'd be able to watch and stuff. Um, that wound up backfiring a little bit, mainly because when out on the back patio, uh, there was a guy who tried to jump the fence. I was like, may I help you? <laughs> and he started yelling at me, and I had to go around to the front, and I'm like, what? And he's like, I want to talk to whoever, you know, is in the house. That would be me. And the guy starts yelling at me in the front, and I'm like, I don't know who you're talking at, but you best back up. You are in the state of Texas. You're on the property that I am taking care of. You best back up. And, well, I want to know what was done inside the house. And you are who? And he didn't want to give me any information. He didn't want it. You better, and it's like, you better step back. You better get off this property. You better go. And, and you don't know who the owners are. I am protecting their property. So back off and get out. And he just yip, yip, yip. <laughs> do, 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 do not continue. Do not, do not continue. Do not. You better go. You better get off the property. I want to know if the carpets were taken care of. I don't know what you want to know that for. I don't know who you are. The boy at the time that I was dating-ish, ish, he's hiding. Hiding. Really? You're not going to say anything? <laughs> he's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Get off the property. Now. And the boy just, and he was biologically an adult, and he's like, I'm great. And when I did that, he was <laughs> like, bye bye. Whatever your issue is with the owner of the property, that is your issue with them. You are not going to come at me. I am doing what I can to protect this property while just trying to live with what's going on in my life. But right now is not the time. This is not the time to be coming on this property. And he want he went to go and it oh boy you best you best you you don't know you don't know 
And so then he was like, well, fine. I'll go talk with the owner then. Go then. And he was, fine, I will. <clears throat> the two neighbors on each side of the house, they saw that and they were like, uh, you handled that like a boss. And I was like, yeah, well, um, I was being nice. I'll just leave it at that. So, continuing with the patio aspect and making my way back, I will. I know. So, um, and if you've watched prior videos, you know I'll make my way back. And so, um, <clears throat> in regards to the rental uh, apartment in Irving before moving to the other one, my back was against the wall, so I could see out, and then the one back against the wall, I didn't even know until like a month and a half, two or three months later, that where I was looking out to faced the lawyer's building office. I had no idea that that was where the lawyers for McCoy Elementary School, Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District's lawyer's office were. I had no idea. But it was just kind of ironic because <laughs> the whole time my back is against the wall and I'm looking all sorts of directions and stuff and it's one of those, all right, whatever. So then in San Antonio and getting back there, my back was against the wall in the corner facing out like I do. And so <clears throat> Mike shows up, biological father, and he you know, pulls the chair out. He's like, well, who made this? And I'm like, oh, I know a guy. And he hadn't, he had seen the furniture, but he hadn't like actually, you know, sat in it yet. He's like, looks at it, he's like, good construction. I'm like, yeah, he's a carpenter. And he was like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, that's to my specifications. He's like, why such a high back? Um, for comfort in different ways. Why black and white? My colors. I like the colors. And then he noticed that in the center of the table was a little bit of a divot. He's like, Is what's supposed to be there? Oh, well, you know, a, um, <clears throat> I could put a fire bowl there. I could. I could. I could do that. I could. If I want to. Um, and up to myself, I'm thinking, do not look underneath the table because of where the connection points were for, you know, adult stuff. <laughs> because um, I, I had uh, explained the aspects of what, you know, could be done with certain things as far as that set of chairs. You know, going to revert back to the original um, first comic stand-up aspect of, uh, you know, taking care of some stuff. And, um, you know, so <laughs> Mike looks at it and goes, well, why is the chair so wide? And I was like, well, you know, comfort <laughs> for, you know, um, I mean, not everybody is my height so you know there's you know you could you could sit down and relax well why are the armrests so why are you asking so many questions <laughs> like it's like it was supposed to be incognito like what are you doing i don't want to have to tell you like i mean i know you know but I don't want to know what I live now. Like, come on, why? <laughs> why are the why are the armrests so what? Well, because not everybody has arms that are my diameter. That's why. Okay. <laughs> why were you mad when you came over? <laughs> Can we stop talking about my chairs? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> and 
so he goes, well, you won't believe what happened. <laughs> right now, um, <clears throat> I don't know what to think. So, like, why don't you let me know? And he sat down and he's like, oh, this is kind of comfortable. <sighs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> he goes, you know, whoever. Whoever made this set for you, they did a good job. It's a nice and stir. Yes, it's got it's 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 built for durability. <laughs> it won't knock over, you know. Just you know, because of stuff. You don't want that to happen. And he, and he finished up and stuff like that. He's like, all right, well, yeah, okay, whatever. So, you know, somebody asked me if I'm a motherfucking Samoan. Can you believe that? <sighs> That's what I did. Just let me light up a cigarette. Because, <clears throat> um, go ahead. And so... My Iggy's like, I'm fucking motherfucking Chinese, motherfucker. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Um. Yes. Genetically, you are. Yes. He's like, so what the fuck made him think that I'm a motherfucking Samoan? seriously asking me while you're yes what the fuck's his problem stupid son of a bitch what was your response just out of curiosity before <laughs> before I answer and he said I picked up the table and I threw it across the It depends on how much muscle. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. 
Um, does so we've already established that the the average Asian will not pick up a table and and throw it. I mean, aside from the fact of what I got in trouble for when it came to defending Kenny, right? That what does that have to do with anything? Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> and he said, "Well, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like they, they get angry and then they like get all huffy puffy and, and then they like punch the wall or throw a tape." Yeah. If they're angry, yes. I don't know why they call you. Uh, why did he ask if you were a Samoan? I mean, other than the fact that you did not grow up in China, you obviously have established yourself that you are not the average Asian. Yeah, okay. What did you grow up eating? Whatever was in the orphanages and foster care. Yeah, so government cheats. And government issued, and government this, and government that. Yeah, so what? Maybe, hypothetically speaking, there has been a time or two that there has been stuff put into the food. You didn't grow up eating rice? No. Okay. And then it made sense, and then he lit up his, his cigarette, and he was like, well, you, you know, just go and make sense, why don't you? Okay. Common sense apparently is a superpower, okie dokie then. There you go. And so I didn't get to explain that at the comedy club because I had three minutes. <laughs> So, you know, I just figured after listening to and trying to watch uh, Jonathan Capehart interviewing uh, Wanda Sykes that I just go over that because why not? Apparently, again, with the neighbors in 736 with their tapping. <clears throat> Nonetheless. Friday night, realistically, come on now, and we're still under quarantine status, technically, so, you know, um, please grow up, <laughs> I mean, just think, anyway, <laughs> you guys have a good one, <laughs> and like and share and subscribe to my official channel.